Hi everyone, Chrissy Burbach here, Afghan Stance Field Rep. Well, it has been a long time coming, but we were finally able to retrieve footage of the stonemasonry vocational training that took place from March to April of this year in the Gohindagan village within sub-district 8 of Kandahar City. The NGO ARESO, which stands for Afghanistan Rural Empowerment and Support Organization, ran this program with help from Spirit of America, USAID, and the U.S. military. This Afghan-based group works on projects ranging from agriculture and education to women's empowerment and community infrastructure throughout the country. The point of this program was to help reduce unemployment in the village, thereby reducing terrorist recruitment. When a sub-district 8 government official was asked why local residents join the insurgency, he simply stated, because they don't have jobs. Many of the residents are subsistence farmers. Unfortunately, the infrastructure is poor and flooding is common. Training locals how to rebuild structures like low water crossings and retaining walls would not only increase their ability to prevent flooding and improve farming practices, but also provide them with important vocational training that could increase their ability to be employed by Afghan companies. Over a period of 48 days, which coincided with the onset of fighting season, 30 men from the area were given the opportunity to learn the essentials of stonemasonry technique. While doing so, they also constructed retaining walls for a primary and secondary water canal in the village. On the first day, the men were given their toolkits. That way, they could implement them throughout the entire course. The three trainers split the students into groups of 10 and started each session with lecture on the principles of stone masonry. Then the instructors would demonstrate these skills to be used in practice throughout the day. The training curriculum consisted of five phases, excavation, pouring plain cement concrete for the foundation, stone masonry work, plain cement concrete on top of the wall, and pointing. In the first phase, the students measured the site and then marked it with wooden pegs and twine where construction would take place. Then a trench was dug and the soil was moved to a short distance away so there would be room to work, but also so they could reuse that dirt later to pack into the canal walls and help stabilize them. Then using plain cement concrete, which is a combination of cement with crushed rocks like limestone and granite mixed with water, the trainees laid the foundation. After that cured, the students prepared the stones for masonry. They built the walls with the rocks, ensuring that they were hammer dressed and stacked in successive layers with cement and dirt to hold them in place. Afterwards, cement concrete was poured on top of the walls and then kept moist with water for seven days. Finally, pointing was applied. The trainees utilized their masonry trowels for the application of the mortar between and around the stones as they were set into place, making sure to fill in all the gaps. Throughout the course, the trainers were sure to revisit the same topics and build on them so the students would retain everything they had learned. They were also taught the importance of worksite safety and tool maintenance so their equipment would last for several years. The irrigation canals that the trainees built now provide irrigation water to 16 families and the community is very appreciative of the improved infrastructure. The project also fostered a sense of pride and accomplishment among the men. Here is what some of the students had to say. <laughs> Arasa was very thankful to Spirit of America for this opportunity to provide training in stone masonry. Now these young men have a positive alternative to joining the insurgency. With their new highly valued skills, they can find meaningful employment to provide for themselves and their families.